skips away, Marshall skips away, Marshall's still going, Marshall's got Richards coming up outside, now inside. Arsenal have gone through an entire league campaign without losing. Bennett and the Dragons win the grand final. Whips that one away and Kane Williamson and his team now world test champions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the TGIF podcast. Thank God it's footy. Back again on the new recording day of Tuesday. Hopefully all posted and ready for your listening on Wednesday at the latest is the plan. I must say, it's been a pretty good week for myself. I've had some beautiful weather out there for the most part. Silly season is approaching ever so quickly. Been plenty going on in the sporting world. Um, we can rip into rip and tear into that in a bit but first of all how was your week bruh anything interesting occur for you since we last spoke hello everyone as always it is, it's good to be here it's good to be back talking a bit of rubbish about sports with my mate here um yeah i guess we did not long after recording uh, the day after last week wednesday night club night up at uh the new local for me and Fred, the Birkenhead RSA Darts Club. Shout out, Birko. We were up there, fourth fourth week along. Um, now, sort of, you, you get there and they, they read out everyone's names for those of you that aren't too familiar with the way that a, a darts club work works, which I can imagine possibly a lot of you may be. Um, now, they, they call out everyone's names and let you know who who's involved in your board. And got the board for and they called out my name and the next name that, that followed now wow it's it's a huge name in uh, the world of darts in New Zealand and, and also in the world of darts he's a world cup representative for New Zealand uh, and a recent qualifier for the world championships at Ali Pali um, that is the man Ben the big rig Rob now um, quite often comes along to Birkenhead it's my first time seeing him up there so it was um it was a pleasure to meet him, a lo- lovely bloke. Um, and yeah, sort of got sort of got told a little bit that he was just this big friendly loud fella and yeah, real awesome dude and got to got to get a game against New Zealand's top darts player. And um That's sick. went out there and only lost two one and managed to get a leg, so it was pretty cool. I was um don't know how the first and third legs went, I don't think they went too flash, but um nice little twenty one dart leg. I think I was 212 with six starts to go. He might have been on about 80 or so. Um, boom, 140. Tasty. Set myself up with 72 there. And yeah, I think he might have been 85, 86, something like that. Missed a couple of darts at double. And um, so I was thinking, you know, I'm a, I'm not, a, I'm not the flashiest of darts players, but I like a double 16. And I'm thinking 20, 20, double 16. You know, it's three darts. We can clear it like that. It's, it's a good way to go. So I threw and boom, triple 20. I'm thinking, God, you've got to be joking. You can't pull these out when you need them, and now you don't need it, and you've got it. So I've gone and I've gone to throw one at the at the double six, and I've just missed by probably a good four centimeters. And I thought, holy, what have I done? And I sort of stopped, took a breath, cleaned the fingers off a little bit, and boom, we've got it. Double six, 21 data, and away so really really happy to, to get a leg there it was um quite a one one of the dudes there said you know there's not many places where you can go and pay three bucks and play the, the country's best so it was pretty cool cool thing to be involved with so um yeah probably my my claim to fame so far in the, the world of darts good on you bro yeah it's <clears throat> not too shabby to pick up a, a leg against uh yeah new zealand's best there so yeah, good to see. Hopefully you get to test yourself a few more times in the near future and oh, fingers keep crossed, grinding yeah. away, keep grinding away. Keep keep throwing for those 180s and keep trying hard. And, um, yeah, it's, um, Stay it's tuned. Fun. We'll be bringing you uh, inside coverage from the 2029... 2029 Q School. It's, um, it's the long-term goal. Give, give myself seven years to, to, to get involved in a little bit more competitive darts and... Uh, 2029 Q School and then 2031 
representing New Zealand at the World Cup. That's the long-term goal. So you heard um, it here first, Panthers. Yeah, it's 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 live and it's it's out there in the airways for everyone to hear. So there's no going back. I guess we're going to have to give it our all and um, see what we can do. But I guess probably enough from us. Yeah, enough of our bullshit, I guess, for for now. Shall we rip into a bit of the sporting news that has come across our uh, our phones this week? Um, the first one, a bit of a shocking news, I'm sure yeah. everyone involved with football and sport in some way, or, or if you watch the news, would have seen this, but Arsenal defender Pablo Mari, um, part of a hectic stabbing over there in Italy. Yeah, so like good. A, bulk stabbing in a supermarket or something like that I believe it was like a little bit um, made me think of the one that we had here in Auckland a, a couple of years ago in the countdown um, but yeah I think there was maybe four or five people injured sent to hospital and one person unfortunately passed away and um, yeah one of those things I think I went on to BBC and had a little look and it's always you know something's up when you're on the sports page and you've just got one of the news sort of heading articles there and it's Pablo Mario or one, one stabbed or one dead, I think it might have been, and um, five injured, including former Premier League star or something like that. And I clicked on it and thought, oh, God, you know, that's, that's unreal. So, um, I mean, I guess, you know, those sorts of things happen kind of every day all over the world, but it's not often that you hear about them. Um, and it's not often someone of that stature, I guess, is involved. So, um, you know, condolences to everyone involved in that. Pretty, pretty yeah. easy news coming out of very shocking over there. <laughs> yeah very shocking news um yeah stay safe out there guys um <clears throat> don't be that that crazy fucker that goes around stabbing people yes yeah if you're ever feeling like that um stay away from the supermarkets and have a chat to your mate or something like that but never the never the way to go about it but i guess um on a little bit of lighter news um sticking with the sticking with the ramble there we've got a um a new women's Super League win streak um, has occurred uh, in the women's Super League over there in England, um, and it's our club. It's it's our ladies representing Arsenal. Uh, a record of thirteen. How good is that? The one and only Arsenal, eh? How good, ladies! It's yeah, it's awesome to see. Um, can't say I follow them as closely as the men's, but yeah, they're an awesome team and. I believe they broke another record recently, like the first team to win 10 games in a row without conceding. Like, I can't, I'm going to have to have a quick search of the name here, because she is, um, she's a legend. She, uh, I don't want to say the name wrong at first, it is Manuela Zinsberger. Now, she, I believe she's been the keeper, and she's the one that's broken this record. Unreal. Some amazing saves, um, and yeah, to keep ten clean sheets in a row in league football, that's um, that's pretty unreal. So shout out to her. Shout out to all the girls. Um, yeah, good to see. Let's go and um, yeah, win one if not two league titles this year. Three, I believe. Also, I think the under twenty ones doing well. Under twenty ones are at top of the league as well at the moment. So. Um, somewhere behind me there touch wood that um, all goes to plan uh, it would be nice to see um, a couple of trophies at the end of the year and a couple of those big ones would be really nice so um, yeah well done to the Arsenal ladies and hopefully they can um, I keep think it going yeah. possibly still top in the Champions League group I think um, so no it was really really good to see yeah good on them keep it going ladies um, awesome to see um, Melbourne Cup was today um, hopefully everyone that went along managed to stay dry it looked like a horrendous a day out yeah. Um, yeah and if you got involved with some tips hopefully you snagged yourself some units um, but yeah shout out to the winner gold tip jockeyed by Mark Zara there and trained by Karen Maher and David Eustace good on them for winning the damn thing yeah, well done. It's um, not so, not a sport I can say I'm too well equipped with information. Um, shout out to my grandpa. He was a big um, a big horse racing man. Um, but I didn't really I hadn't really looked into it too much. So we had a little bit of a 
chuck two bucks in the in the bowl and we'll, we'll give you a horse sort of jam at work and I was given Traley Rose who just having a look now I knew didn't win but came in uh, in a nice 17th position so I drew a dud there I believe um, one of our teacher aides possibly took out the win I think so well done to her I can't remember if it was um, her or possibly one of the teachers but uh, horse won wasn't it I believe yes horse number one yeah I think possibly actually our teacher aides so shout out to her well done on getting yourself a little bit of winnings there, but well done to the, the winning horse and the winning jockey and everyone involved. And obviously it's always a, a big event of the equestrian calendar um, and it's a, a big one for the punters and, and the dribblers alike. So um, I'm sure regardless of the, the weather, the wetness, um, everyone would have enjoyed themselves a pretty nice afternoon. But what, what is it with Melbourne at the moment, eh? With this weather, we had, we had a couple of games the double header, wasn't it? I think over in Melbourne, a couple of games rained out. Yeah, a lot of games have been rained out been there. Been a wet horse race. You know what's going on? Yeah, El Nino, wreaking havoc. Yeah, it's not, um, it's not what we want. So. Whatever it's called, don't know. We don't really get those hectic weather systems down this far down, but. A bit of rain and a bit of sun and a bit of wind in the day up here in Auckland. All four uh, seasons, that. yeah, in one day. So we kind of we're always we're we're ready, we're equipped, we're well prepared, but. When you get something like that coming in, on, it's a bit more intense. You, you're, um, you can be thrown off guard a little bit. But um, probably it in terms of sporting news or yeah, news I haven't about sport. I haven't really seen anything else that we're not going to touch on later. So into another drab week of accountability. Yeah, now none from four. No drums this week, unfortunately, punters. Um, let us know. What do you reckon? Did you enjoy the drums? Now I forgot to say, we didn't get a sound guy sorted. I don't think I really made the volume I, match. It was quite sharp on the air. I found. Don't know if Sorry if that blew your ears out, punters. Don't um, know if we can be calling your sound guy Sam just yet. And we also we need you on the mic. So unfortunately, we're not going to be um, giving you the the dual role there. But we did. We got involved. I just had that thought. Let's get a bit of us going and. Shout out to you, mate. You, you got yourself involved and got a bit going. And yeah, it was something a bit different. So let us know what you thought. But fingers crossed we can get ourselves another one and we'll um, wait with some more drums or maybe a trumpet or who knows what. We'll, you know, let us know what are you after. What, what can we do? Um, but another drab one. Um, kind of hard to get a result when you, you pick the team that loses. Um, especially if you got other things involved there, and that's kind of what we did. So, um, yeah, no, no money coming through this time round. Yeah, a bit off on the Europa League one there, but you know, you, you're listening to two unwavering gooners here, um, and we're going to show that unwavering bias in our tips. And if you're coming here to find value against the, the gooners, against the arse you're probably listening to the wrong podcast. Um, but hey, if we ever do see something, and it's, maybe it does look a bit value, we, we might let you know. We'll let you know, but I won't be, we won't be on it. betting against the, uh, we won't be wasting the, the arsenal money. there. No way. No so, way. But I guess yeah, uh, we'll, it's another shocker. 5-0 against Forrest, and we both didn't pick the goal scorer. Otherwise, yeah, would have been in the money, I guess. But I thought, personally, Jesus could have bagged himself almost a hat-trick. Yeah, a couple um, of shockers, that last one. Ooh. Unlucky uh, for the punters that backed me in there on my bet. Um, I think I just went for Xhaka. Xhaka has been scoring lately. He's been our, our main man on the score sheet those last two games. but didn't, I didn't get on him. He scores. I talk about not getting on him. He scores. I get on him. And he doesn't score, so it's, it's... It's going to be one of those ones where maybe if Nat gets on Jaka, give it a wide berth, but if he, if he if he doesn't... Jump on. You know he's going to score. And I'm, I'm probably going to get on him most weeks because I'm a big fan of Jaka, so he might not be scoring too often, but when he does, you got to know about it. Um, and he, he likes to score he likes to score a good goal. And he, like you said, he's been scoring, some, scoring a few more than, than usual this time around, so it's been nice to see, but we'll... Um, Hopefully, a little bit later on in the episode, be able to deliver you a, um, maybe a few more tips that might be on the more positive side of the scale, fingers crossed. 
yeah, look, nowhere to go but up for us. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll um, rip into a bit of our reviews of the Rugby League World Cup, shall we? Should we get into that Kiwis game first then? Kiwis um, up against the Irish. Yeah, that one was, um, look, pretty hectic start to the game there in all honesty. Um, good on the Irish to go 2-0 up and putting some pressure on us. Um, I thought it was an awesome first try though by Hughes to sort of kill the momentum a bit and <clears throat> you know it was off the back of some great little work from Cheese there and a beautiful little chip in behind for Rapana who was you know in miles of space there to score our second on the 20 minute mark and then again a, another lovely little kick in behind from Hughes this time for Hiku um, to score our third there Showing the difference that Jerome Hughes makes when he, you know, Unreal, uh, he gets down on that 20 metre zone of the opposition. He had a real big game, mate. real nice to have him back into the lineup and slotting in nicely and yeah, showing what he's able to do even... You know, even just in that opening half an hour, you yeah. can see straight away. <coughs> Excuse me, straight so. away. Yeah, and then good, good on the Irish for managing to get one back just before the half hour mark for a little intercept there and but Husey again just to swing the momentum back towards us four try involvements from the first four tries Heku crosses for a double you know plenty of good points there for the Kiwis in the first half but probably the one big talking point from uh, an Irish point of view at least was that uh, big JWH shot to the head, you know. Maybe a bit lucky very, not to see red. Very, very lucky, I have to say. I, I, personally, I thought it yeah, could have very easily been a red. Probably should have been a red. Um, I don't think it would have had too much of an impact the way that the result would have gone. I'd like to think we probably still would have come away off the win, but it definitely would have um, thrown a bit of a spanner into the works. But yeah, gnarly, <coughs> excuse me, gnarly shot and. Um, yeah, I think we're quite lucky to only come away with a yellow on the end. Yeah, for sure. We'll have to wait and see. I'm not too sure if the uh, judiciary has dealt with that yet, but I'm sure they will be handing down a ban of some sort to one of our, you know, important big men there. Um, so it's a bit of a downer, but, you know, second half we saw pretty much the same as the first half there. You know, maybe a few more tries for the Kiwis as the Irish tired out a bit um, but you know ended up 48-10 another try for the Irish you know I thought overall we were pretty good without being fantastic shout out to Hughes who was you know absolutely phenomenal on his return from injury there and we'll be needing plenty of that Hughes and Manu magic in oh, the next couple of rounds the way a couple of those you know plays have been going, it's a bit clunky and yeah, the goal kicking will be needing plenty of tries to win games so <sighs> yeah, one of those games, I, I, I kind of have what, four or five things that I, I took away from this game, I thought firstly we've, you've already touched on them a little bit but how good was Jaram Hughes, like you said I, I personally think if it wasn't for him in this game, it would have been a lot more respectable for Ireland I think the scoreline would have been a lot closer I think he was one of the only players Really, with sort of that had that sort of threat about him going forward, um, involved in some really good plays like you've spoken about, and got himself a couple of trials tries to boot. Maybe we give him a go with the kicking. Who knows? Can he do it all? Um, whereas we you know we're struggling there. It's an, you know another another thing with the goal kicking. It's somewhere where I think we could really get done in. Um, I don't know what we missed as such in this game, but I, it was there was a couple of shockers. There was one from like I want to say five meters, four meters off the posts. Yeah, it was just it, not very good. Yeah, you know, obviously we give them credit for what they're doing out there, professional sports players. But yeah, pretty poor. If I like to think I would have got up there and just given a little toe punt and got it over. Surely. Um, but you look at England, thirteen from seventeen, and their big one there and. 
couple of other teams putting in some really good performances with the boat. So it's come to the finals, you you don't put in your big game, and you know it comes down to one of those games where you are you one or two tries in it. Yeah, you got to turn your six uh, fours into sixes, turn your fours and into sixes. be able to capitalise if there is a penalty against the likes of Australia or the English or whoever it may be. Um, because it's not just going to be free flowing footy as we've seen the last few games. So yeah, you're right. Goal kicking. Improvement needed. Yeah, definitely somewhere where I thought we were we lacked a little bit there, the goal kicking, and then and another area where I thought I'm you know I'm still not a hundred percent sold on the way that we're playing is sort of you know looking at the backs. I feel like there's been a couple of players who have had some really good performances, but there's been a few stages where I thought we might have been a little bit flashier, a little bit more on top of the game, you know, I understand that it's a different mix up when you're playing international footy, not the players you're used to playing with throughout the year, but um, you know, a lot of these players have, have had some awesome seasons and, you know, sort of maybe not not showing what I would have expected, but in the other end, you look at the forwards, I feel like the forwards have been possibly our most damaging players at the moment, I feel like I was up against a fairly weaker pack, but they ran really hard. There were some big hits, you know, barring that JWH perform. Uh, hit, I think there's been some pretty good performances throughout the three games from the Ford Pack. So yeah, dominant, very dominant through the Fords. I think you know, as well. Yeah. If we can keep that up against one of these more stronger teams, and um, obviously, you know, we look forward to um, a quarter final there up against Fiji. So you know, maybe not one of the teams you're putting up there in your top three, four nations in the world, but still a team that have managed to get themselves into knockout footy, and we all know what, what happened last time we played them, so I think if the Fords can roll into this knockout, knockout stages with some, some good good confidence behind them, and you know, coming off the back of a couple of good games, and you know, some real good solid running, and get some good metres there for the, the backs to hopefully get out there and do some magic, we can um, hopefully see us getting through into the the far later stages of the, the tournament but I think those were the sort of the main points I took from this you know it was a, a solid solid win a couple of things that could have gone a little bit better um, and obviously you know that could have been a big turning point possibly the other way with the, the big hit there but um, 3-0 and into the into the knockout stages is good to see exactly <coughs> good stuff from the Kiwis um, yeah, you can only beat what's in front of you. Um, so, 3 and 0. Well done. Let's make it another 3 and win the damn thing, eh? Yeah, fingers crossed. How good would that be? On to England versus Greece. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah, very, very hectic scoreline in this one. With the Poms racking up 94 points in this one. It was a 90, 94 to 4. Like, what a, what a game, lad. I mean... I can't remember exactly what I said at the start three or four weeks ago, but I definitely didn't think England were going to go as well as they did. You know, I, always, I said maybe that home advantage may give them a bit of a boost, but um, you may also argue that they haven't had that big of a challenge. But I mean, they played Samoa, which is a team people were backing to go well, and um, but yeah, 90, 94 points, and you know, some. I know it's against uh, uh, a lesser nation in terms of rugby league, Greece. Um, but some some very good tries. Yeah. Uh, but also shout out to Greece. Right on to Tomoko. Uh getting another try there. On the box he he also got the first uh, their first try at the Rugby League World Cup, I believe. So when they played France, yeah. Yeah, so yep. um you know it's it could have a, a good try too. Yeah, look, I mean the first twenty score line was close. You know, no matter what way you wanna read the performance, but 10-4 to the Poms, like you said, the Greeks scoring a great try there, um, but look, that first 20 was about as good as it got from a Greek point of view, I mean, after that, second 20 of that first half there, it started to get ugly, and the Poms ran in six tries in that period to be up 44-4 at half time, and a number of players looking pretty good for them, um, especially those three playmakers there through the middle. Uh, Williams, Wellsby, and Sneed, but um, 
Yeah, also, exactly. the big man out wide, Dom Young, he loves a oh, hat trick, doesn't he? Same same players I was going to talk about. I thought, like you said, those those three playmakers there, Williams with a, another big game. Rosby, I thought, it's a player I hadn't heard of before that first game and sort of shot out the blocks in some awesome form. And yeah, he's looking really good. Um, quite that mould of a six that I quite like. You know, he's big, he's strong, and he's, he's able to do a little bit of everything. And then, yeah. Um, Snake there kicking kicking 13 goals like I, I said before keep that score taking over <coughs> you know um, if he'd made if he'd made 16 from 17 would have brought up the, the 100 and obviously they had the try disallowed there right at the end, end right yeah. in front so <coughs> excuse me um, so yeah a couple of um, real standout performances in there then yeah Dom Young what's I don't know where he's um, where he's up to at the moment um, is that Seven tries, possibly eight tries, maybe, or possibly a few more. Um, I might even have a little look at that. Yeah, I think he what he scored a hat trick against Samoa, did he? And then he scored four there. He might have even scored four up against Samoa. So yeah, good on Dom Young. And then I mean, second half it was a one-way street, really. Again. Bombs racking up the points and the Greeks kind of running out of steam, but well, I think either way you can't really read into it too much. For the Poms, they are looking very, very dangerous. Probably the informed side of the tournament. Them or the Kangaroos really, but um, yeah, weren't up against the, the strongest opponents there, but good on Greece for managing to make it through to the World Cup. But exactly, exactly, you know, well done to them and <coughs> excuse me, it would be nice to see maybe a few more tournaments where they get they get to play a few more of the developing league nations. Um, I've also just got it up here, eight tries <coughs> there for Dom Young in three games. Um, his nearest opponents both there on six. Uh, Louis Senior there for Ireland with six and three and um, then you got the man on there on the wing for Ozzy Trashado Carr, six tries in two games, so <laughs> is he able to get himself um, ahead there? Yeah, possibly. You know, if the Roos can have another <coughs> big win up against the Lebanese, and yeah, well, it'll be a shootout between those two. That's for sure. They're two sides looking in really good form with gun wingers. Um, but yeah, Greece, like you said, they'll be hoping to. Maybe have a game next time around against someone where it's a bit more competitive because yeah, it's pretty rough for those players to turn up and get ducked pretty much every game this tourney. But yeah, not too much else for me on this one. Um, unless you had something else to add on the palms. No, nah, I guess we'll. Um, <coughs> I got a bloody frog in my throat. Sorry, guys. <coughs> but, um, I guess we'll have a look at that Fiji Scotland game. Um, you know, not the best scoreline possibly there for Fiji you know, when you look at it. Um, but you know, you got to obviously give credit where it's true. Right under Scotland for um, keeping it to a, a little bit more of a respectable score in the end there. Yeah, look, well done to the Scots for making it a you know more competitive game for them scoreline wise. Um, they should certainly be proud of that after. A rough couple of opening games there for them, um, and I mean, yeah, on Fiji, not too shabby from them. I don't think the scoreline tells the entire story, but you know, they probably deserve something a bit more flattering than that. In all honesty, they dominated all of the game there, or most of it. Um, but then Scotland kind of, when they had a chance or two. They pounced. Um, one was off an, an intercept there against the run of play. Um, so look, you could look at it on one side of the coin and say, well done Scotland, ruthless on attack. Um, the other side of the coin, maybe the Fijians looking a little bit shaky um, on defence, which is good signs for the Kiwis. And you know, if they're dominating periods of possession and not running up big score lines against no disrespect, that Scotland line up there. 
maybe the lads will be able to, you know, have a good performance up against the Fijians and withhold their pressure and maybe not have to put too much on to get on the scoreboard there. Yeah, well, well <coughs> we've seen a little bit of everything um, from Fiji so far in this tournament, obviously up against Aussie. Not the best performance there, and then coming in there against Italy, I believe it was in that second game, and coming away with a pretty awesome performance. And you know, we spoke about it last week, and they, um, yeah, they scored some really good tries, ran the ball really hard, and then possibly put it put it all out there in that that second game, and maybe maybe they were a little bit short in the tank. Who knows what it was, but maybe they're saving themselves for the for the next round. I'm not too sure, but um, it could be decent signs there, maybe. Um, We'll be, we'll be crossing our fingers that we don't have any slip ups um, but I think um, again sort of similar to Greece it's, um, it's nice to see teams like Scotland here putting in a pretty nice performance um, against one of the, the nations with a few more NRL experienced players um, and yeah maybe they could be another one of those teams involved in a little tournament with a few more of the developing nations it would be cool to see a bit more of that trying to, to build the game a little bit more in a few different countries yeah, for sure. Shout out Scotland. Um, it's rough to turn up and lose all your games and not be much of a shout, but yeah. Good on them for turning up and making this one pretty close scoreline-wise. Um, on to the Kangaroos. Up against yeah, Italy. That pool there, yeah. I mean, again, another pretty dominating performance from the Roos. I thought a couple of players really stood out from the highlights package. Um, Trail Mitt there, looking particularly dangerous, along with Teddy, Yo, a number of usual candidates there. I mean, this one was probably expected up against Italy there, in all honesty. A big one for the Roos, but <coughs> looks like they might have landed themselves a good quarterfinal as well, um, from their perspective to face uh, the Lebanese. Yeah, another big performance there for Ozzy, obviously <coughs> expecting them to go through. <coughs> Sorry, lads, I don't, lads and ladies, I don't know what's going on here. I've got a bit of a <coughs> tickle in the throat. Um, yeah, you know, kind of expected 3-0 three, three and o there in the group stages. Um, racking up another another big score and getting a few more tries under the belt. And yeah, like you said, is it a... Um, is it a uh, possibly an easy, easier draw. Um, you know, living on one of the teams there with um, less of the experienced NRL contingent there. Um, but you know, it's uh, it's always good to see for for those fans and for those involved with for, with Aussie rugby league. You know, there when your your team can go out and sort of put one of these teams to bed, I guess, and make sure you don't make a make a mess of a game like this. Um, but I guess. For our sake, maybe you, you hope that the Aussies don't get to get into top gear because it's possibly looking like a, an Aussie Kiwi semi final, I believe, is it? Yeah, I think that's on the script um, for most people. You've got the winner of the Lebanon uh, Lebanon Australia quarter final due to face the winner of the New Zealand Fiji final. So, yeah, a couple of games there that will be interesting to watch in the next round but speaking of the Lebanese they racked up a really good impressive one against the Jamaicans I thought like, it was a good first five minutes for the Jamaicans there securing their little short kickoff and short kickoff out good almost, we almost scoring the first try of the match only to be held up over the line but look after that it was all one way traffic wasn't it um, the tries just kept flowing for the Lebanese there. Um, they were looking class, really. One of those games, you know, obviously Lebanon have been a team now for a wee while that have had some quality players playing for them. And <coughs> one of those teams that has sort of seemed to grow the game a little bit more, which has been awesome to see. And could have, could have very easily been a, um, a closer game up against Jamaica here, yeah, obviously their first appearance at the Rugby League World Cup and sort of nothing to lose for them so um, yeah it could have been a, it could have been a different result in the end um, but Lebanon managed to go out there and um, like, like we just said about Aussie before put, put them to bed and um, an 
another team, I think you, you were going to look at it there at some stage, another team there that um, smashed up their goal kicking as well, I believe. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, good on Jamaica there at the end for the snagging one back off the back of a mistake from the Lebanese and, you know, another off the back of a scrap, scrappy part scrappy play, sorry, but um, yeah, good on them for getting to double figures I suppose, but like you said, Lebanon getting up to 74 points in the end, and Moses was very, very sharp with his goal kicking, 7 from 7, and then you mentioned before you like a big running strong number 6, Dewey, 5 from 6, and boy didn't he look good on his return from suspension, he was... Absolutely awesome. wreaking havoc for the Jamaicans. Yeah, really good to see. And obviously, for me as a as a Tigers fan, it's awesome to see him in some good form and coming off the back of the season there. And hopefully, he can um, bring that through into the into the next year. But um, yeah, no, really good performance after after missing that second game there. Um, and then yeah, like you said, that, that goal kicking. You know, it's a team that hey, if they can um, run Aussie close and. Know, make sure that they're on fire off the boat, who knows what could happen. Yeah, I mean, look, we'll touch on it a bit later, but stranger things have happened. Stranger things have happened. Um, yeah, well done, Dewey. Well done, Lebanon. Dewey, man of the match there, well deserved. Um, on to another big, big win. Sort of a theme of this round. Tonga up against the Cook Islands. I mean, very, very impressive here from Tonga. Reminding everyone in the rugby league community uh, just how good they can be on their day. Um, racking up 92 points against yeah. the Cookies in this one. Unreal, another, like you said, a little bit of a theme throughout this round. Plenty of tries. Um, and yeah, 92 points, you know. And Again, another another team. I've just had a little look here. Fourteen from sixteen, Katoa kicked. So it's all oh, right. You know, they could have been close again to a hundred. So uh, a huge, huge win, and um, obviously a little bit of a Pacific Island battle there, Tonga up against the Cookies. Um, you know, good for Tonga as well after a little bit of a slow, slower start to the tournament than maybe some would have expected. Um, sort of really got out there and dominated the cookies in this one so I think the fans will be pretty pretty happy with the way it turned out yeah definitely definitely they'll be happy Tonga can be a scary prospect um, particularly when their main man Tamalolo is causing plenty of havoc through the middle and you know they got plenty of good players across the park and look they avoid the Kiwis and the Kangaroos until the grand final if they can get past Samoa next week and then probably England the week after I mean it's a pretty good draw for the Tongans yeah exactly so one of those games there that you know, we were, I was maybe hoping to tee up a little bit a little bit later on there um, in, in, the, in the in the events but <coughs> it's going to be an awesome one and I think um, you know coming off, off form like this, you know, it's a bit unfortunate there for the, the cookies, but possibly maybe not the, the squad depth there that some of these other Pacific nations do, um, but yeah, looking looking forward to that, um, that next game, it's going to be a, a really tasty match, I can't wait. Yeah, like you said, um, the cookies don't really have the depth there, so not too much to be critical about for them, um, I guess internally they'll be pretty disappointed with that but like they obviously don't have this star studded side that Tonga do and yeah unlucky on the day I guess but another Pacific nation that does now have a little bit more of that star studded talent Samoa um, up against the French in a game that was possibly harder to pick than most may have thought yeah look um probably an expected result before the tournament and maybe in hindsight when you run through the the team sheets there but look 
the French did the business against the Greeks and had a closer game on paper against the Poms there, so you might have been forgiven for giving them, you know, a bit more of a sniff, the French, but unlucky for them to be knocked out in an emphatic style there by the Samoans. I thought, yeah, very good win for Samoa this one. Um, an effective round of 16 clash here, um, but yeah, well done for them to rack up 60 points there and might have been close to the 70 I think with a few more successful kicks from Crichton but yeah look finally started to click for the uh, Samoans in those last couple of games there particularly those Penrith boys I thought they all looked very very slick yeah they obviously they do the business week in week out there for club and doing the business out there for their country as well I've just, just had a look then uh, 9 from 11, Crichton was, so... Uh, not too not bad, too then. Bad. Another, that might have been, might have just been, yeah. Another pretty good, pretty good performance there for, um, in terms of the kicking, but yeah, really good, I think, the way that Samoa have sort of turned around since the, um, the start that they had to the tournament. Um, you know, like, yeah, like I said, it would have been really nice to see Samoa up against Tonga in, in the final, you know, even, even as a Kiwis fan, I think it would have been awesome to see, but... Um, you know, can the, these Penrith boys that you were talking about, you know, can they get out there and play possibly? Um, you know, like you said, they've, they've been playing very, very well and slick, I think is the word that you use there. They're looking very slick. Um, and then, yeah, nice powerful forward pack to, to throw in the mix. It's, yeah, it's pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, they all did their job very solidly, didn't they? Um, good signs leading into that big quarterfinal match that we'll have a quick chat about again soon um, with their neighbours a good one to uh, get your teeth into but um, first we'll talk about this morning's game PNG versus Wales um, yeah look good on PNG for picking up a good big win there against the Welsh um, I thought it could have been a lot more if it wasn't for the the pissing rain there. It was fucking heaving down. Yeah, it's kind um, of. I didn't get. To, this is the only game I actually haven't seen anything for just yet. I oh, it was seen, absolutely heaving. But I've, I've, I've had a read, and yeah, from what I've what I've read, apparently yeah, heaving down with the rain, and um, but I did hear a couple of really good tries were scored in with the conditions. Oh yeah. Um, a couple of awesome tries, um, but it's always difficult to do in the pissing and rain. And a clean sheet. You don't really often talk about clean sheets and rugby league or rugby union, but to, to keep a team to know is, is always good. It's nice to see some solid defence like that. and Not as many tries scored, but another team there, six from six. Obviously, we know um, how good of a kicker uh, Reese Martin is, but uh, to go out there and get all your kicks is always nice. So, yeah, 36 now. It seemed like it was a, um, a pretty solid, solid performance there from PNG. Yeah. They were very good, um, particularly on defence, like you said, to get that clean sheet, it's always nice, but they were very dominant in the contact, and yeah, they'll be hoping to bring a similar performance for their quarter-final coming up. Um, but look, unlucky for the Welsh there. Obviously, they're a bit more invested in the, the other code, and maybe football, but, you know, they've certainly had their moments they led the cookies at half time I believe or they led them 12-0 um, so good on them but another one of those teams that unfortunately went 0 from 3 so yeah unlucky Wales yeah obviously a bit of a tough ask for them to to come away obviously a little bit of a maybe a slightly weaker pull there for them they might have had a chance to, to get a little bit on the board there but um, you know hopefully they can continue to build over the next few years and get out there for the next World Cup and you know they'll be looking to improve and make a, um, a, a I guess a slight a slight increase in terms of their um, what they come away with so um, P&G I think they will, they'll be happy managed to get themselves um into the knockout knockout stages there and, and possibly a group that they may have been a little bit worried about possibly having a bit of a slip up in. Yeah, for sure. 
Panjay have certainly developed as a footy side over the last couple of years and they've um, managed to get out of the group with a couple of good convincing win wins and they took Tonga all the way there so good on them. Um, so shall we rip into these quarterfinal previews and we can have another chat about the teams yet to play. Yeah, um, I guess this we'll week. Well, as, we, as we like to do, we'll start off with um, start off with our team. We'll start off with the Kiwis up against um, Fiji in a, a matchup that a few few of the Kiwis fans may be a little bit wary about, possibly after um, what happened the last time around in the World Cup. Exactly, exactly. Um, a big matchup here. Probably our first proper test of the tournament. Uh, no disrespect there to the teams in our pool, but like you said, we'll be hoping for no repeats of last time, where they did the business in the quarters there. Um, look, not the best group stage showing from the Kiwis, but in the end, if you look at it on paper, we scored a lot of tries and conceded a lot less than we scored, so end of the day I've, I've been saying it it's been a theme of what I've been saying about the Kiwis the whole World Cup you can only beat what's in front of you um, I you think we so have far. yeah look I think we have a much stronger lineup um, this time around compared to last World Cup spearheaded by obviously Hughes's return to the side there and Joey Manu we all know what he can do on his day we saw it at various stages in the group stage there but I'm sure Madge will let him let him loose for 80 or at least until the game's wrapped up there so come on the lads let's get through to the semis and book a match up against the Aussies Fuck, yeah that'll be a hectic one it's, it's one of those games on paper that I think we should be winning every day of the week really you know we've, like you said we've got a, a bit of a stronger squad than we did the last World Cup um couple of these players that are putting in big shifts for us a bit more in our own experience under the belt now which is um, awesome to see um, but Fiji you know a, f a few players on you know on their day can be very very dangerous you know obviously Kikau is a big a big man there in, in terms of um, their star players and um, you know, everyone knows the threat he brings to a, to a team um, and if he can get get under some good ball running and um, maybe a few of our lines a few times and try and get one on one with the fullback and bowl, bowl through over him or who knows what he, what he can do he can seem to, seem to be able to do a little bit of everything and, um, but it's one of those one of those games where I think if, you know, like I said before the forwards can put in a big performance you know and maybe hopefully keep him quiet make sure that we're, we're wrapping the ball up and the tackles with him not letting any offloads allowed because we, we, we know his, um, we know what he's able to do um and yeah, if we can keep him quiet, um, hopefully we can yeah, put him a, a, a solid performance and try and, you know, build up a little bit of form. I know you said it early on, you don't want to be peaking uh, in the group stages, but maybe now it's time to start making that ascent, I believe. Absolutely. It's, you know, we've, we're at base camp, we've, we've made our way to base camp and we've, we've, you know, I don't want to say we've cruised there, but we're, we've got there and you know maybe now it's time to start pushing on and, and make that ascent and um, try to get to that peak right right about it that uh, maybe the 50th minute of that final hopefully would be nice yeah um, that would be nice let's go to the lads um, Fiji like you said they've, they've been dangerous um, they've got dangerous players in their sides in their side sorry um, but I think they have thrown out a few mixed performances so far this World Cup and we'll be hoping that they don't bring their absolute best because like you said if they do it'll certainly be a tough game if Kikau and Corusau can wreak any havoc but I mean they looked better up against Italy in round two than they did against the Scots um, but after the dominance the Ruse showed over them in round one, I'm hoping that the Kiwi boys have had a look at that internally and they'll be hoping to replicate something you know, similar if they can manage a really good performance. Um, I know it'll be tough, particularly in the quarterfinal there, 
but if we can put our best out um, and we can like you said start to make that ascent um, we might have to put out a really really good performance next week to get past what's likely to be the kangaroos gonna be a big one it's it is looking likely to be the kangaroos like you said um, and we we know what a derby brings it's gonna be a big one um, and with a, a lot on the line so um, you know, I've, I've already said if the Fords can put in a, a good game here if we can get another performance from Hughes like we did in the last game um, we come away with a, a solid win I'm hoping Fiji obviously would have hoped to put in a bit more of an effort against Aussie but they've, I think they've done well they will, they'll be able to um, after their time that they've, they've made it through to uh, another knockout stage and um, for our sake and uh, I'm sorry to all the Fijian, Fijian fans out there but for our sake I'm hoping we can um, get a bit of revenge a bit of payback for last time and um, push on like we said into that game against Aussie um, we don't want to jinx anything just yet we, who knows what can happen like you said weirder things have happened but um, it will most likely be Aussie and um, it'll be, a, be an awesome game if we can we get to see that yeah for sure um Look, I went and tried to find some value on a punt for this game, but there's no try score odds at the moment. It's looking a bit bland on net, nets there. Um, but I reckon, look, when they come out, look towards Kiwis to win 13 plus, and then just top that up with a little bit of Jerome Hughes anytime. I think you'd be in the money there. Um, it might not pay the best, but after that last round, you'd be back in Jerome to get himself across the line again. What do you think? Yeah, I like it. I, I think I, I may agree. It may not be the pain pain the most, but I think it's a uh, it's a, a bet that you are, you're hopefully looking to to bank. He normally pays bet- anywhere between three to five dollars, depending on the opposition in um, NRL. So maybe looking at two to three in this one here. Yeah, you look at the Add that with a dollar twenty for the thirteen plus. The 13 so plus there at the moment. Probably not looking at much more than three or four bucks for that, but I reckon it's a almost a sure thing if yeah. the Kiwis can turn up and play well. I've um, I've kept my money in my wallet for this this little round here of um, of rugby league games. I'm gonna um, hopefully come out and bank us a little bit bit of kitty in the in the footy in the football and um, hopefully we can build on from there but I've, I've kept the money in, in the wallet for this one um, so I'll be I'll be crossing my fingers for you I might have to get on get on yours there um, and hope to also yeah, just build a little bit of, little bit of money in the kitty and then we can we can move on but I guess the next match to take a little look at is probably the um, one of the teams we've just been sort of speaking about um, Kangaroos up against Lebanon. Yeah, the other quarterfinal on our side of the draw. Um, look, we've been saying it. Not too much to pick from here. Um, look, if the Lebanese can pull this off, it'll be what they truly class as a good old fashioned rugby league miracle, I'd be saying. Um, look, if they can replicate what they did up against the Jamaicans there, where they, you know, Dewey's running really hard, breaking tackles and setting up plays. Um, Moses has a blinder. Everyone else in the team absolutely defends their dicks off. Um, yeah, like we said, stranger things have happened. Yeah, I mean. You'd like to think it's it's a fairly easy run through here for Aussie, but you know a, a rugby league miracle, like you said, it would be awesome to see. We we know how Lebanon have grown over the the last few years. They've, they've been in, involved in this rugby league circle for a wee while now. They've they've had a few pretty standout players pull on the Lebanese jersey for them throughout the years, and um, I think a lot for a lot of these players, they'll just be super proud to be. And a knockout round game against what many would 
I guess say to be the, the top team we'd like to say that's the Kiwis but um, I think many would say that the Kangaroos would probably be the top the top team and uh, there's no doubting how good some of those players are I think they're all um, all those Lebanese lads would be pretty pretty proud of themselves to be in a knockout game of the Rugby League World Cup like, up against um, 17 18 however many players will be involved in, on the day of the world's best absolutely um something to hang your hat on for some of those maybe you know not so household names in the Lebanese squad there um, but you'd have to say the Roos probably going to pick up a strong win here um, and yeah hopefully it'll be us waiting for whoever wins this one in the semis and if it is the kangaroos what a match up that'll be um it might be nice if in this one the lebanese can inflict a few injuries for us or maybe you know get the aussies all rocked up and get a few of them banned um yeah, throw, bands, throw punches nice. throw a few punches or you know a few you know maybe a nathan cleary head high um get him a, a, a ban so who knows yeah, if maybe anything like that. Dorian Moses can get under their skin a little bit, you know, and um, get them get them racked up. You know, we've we've already seen what um, Dory's been able to. I'm um, not that I can do anything like that, but we know what he's said said to referees. You know, who knows what he might be able to be able to say to some of those players out there just to get under their skin a little bit. And um, who knows what could happen? We don't. I don't, I don't condone it, but you know, if um, if they're being coached by Michael Checker, if there's anyone who might condone a little bit of that, yeah. You're right I there. think he's your man. Um, yeah, so it'd be good if good if we can face a depleted Rose side in any way, shape, or form. There, um, an injury or a, a ban. Um, you know, never wish something too hectic injury-wise. Maybe just a, a week or two strain there would be nice. So that yeah, like I said, we can face a depleted Rose side there. Um, that's probably about it for that side of the draw. And we skip over to the hosts up against PNG in their quarterfinal. Yeah, now it's we've said it a few times, we've, t- we've touched on it a little bit, but the home advantage, I think, I, again, it's it's one of those games you probably on paper you expect England to probably get the win. We we know what PNG have been able to do throughout some of these games and obviously they took Tonga pretty close but I think you probably lean towards England in this one here and I think this could be maybe one of those games where we do see that home advantage sort of give them that bit of an extra push to sort of get them over the finish line um, it's going to be a really good game though I think two, two teams who play with a lot of passion two teams who play with a lot of pride um, so yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing, um, seeing this game I think it's it's going to be, going to, this side of the draw has got some really tasty looking matchups, i got to say. Yeah, look, England are probably looking too strong based on, you know, those three impressive performances so far. And with, like you say, that home advantage there. Um, but you never know. The Kumals do have a lot of quality across the park. Um, a number of handy players and particularly this this year 2022 they've looked a very very handy footy side um, with a few good ones on the board I think their only loss was when they took Tonga all the way in their opening fixture so look if they can turn it into a close game against England they've got the sharpshooter Reese Martin we've been banging on about goal kicking a lot this episode but yeah, um, the Kumals, they'll be definitely turning up with a lot of pride and passion, um, as they always do, and, you know, they'll have the whole nation on their shoulders, um, behind them, and I'd say most other f- nation's fans will be supporting the Kumals in this one, you the, the English. Underdog, yeah. you got to back the underdog. Yeah, and I think... You know, a lot of Kiwis and Aussies and Pacific Islanders of various 
to send. Um, they'll watch the Kumals and, and recognise a good footy side when they see one. And yeah, like you say, back the underdog. Um, I think PNG though, when you look at their, their tournament, I think they'll have to come away from it pretty stoked. Um, two good wins and you know a pretty pretty close game with Tonga in that opening round. And um, I think it's a tough, it's a bit of a tough ask, like you said, you know, England coming in off some pretty impressive performances and the home nation and it, it is a tough ask um, but I think regardless of the result they'll be pretty stoked with, with how their World Cup's gone so far and um, you know, another team who have been involved with rugby league for a wee while now and it's um, they're always a, a team like you said pride and passion um, really really good team to watch always play enjoyable rugby league so um, I'm yeah really crossing my fingers for uh, maybe a closer game than we expect in this one here yeah, fuck, you never know, eh? Um, if it is, and PNG can manage to pull it off, I'd say that probably go down as one of the, the biggest days in their National Rugby League history. Um, but look, if you're a betting man, you probably have to put your money on England um, to be fair, but come on, PNG, let's do one for the underdog. Yeah, well, oh, it'd be, it'd if be I can pick one, it'd be Lebanon, but PNG, yeah. you can come in it, second it'd there. It'd be good to see, it'd be really good to see, and obviously uh, knocking out the host, it would be, um, be a bit of a shock, I think, for a lot of people. Um, so yeah, we'll be crossing our fingers for PNG in this game here. Um, but I guess the, the last match that we've got to take a look at is probably the, the match of the round, I'd say, and it could well be the match of the World Cup. Tonga up against some uh, the Battle of the Pacific. It's oh, it's going to be an absolute scorcher of a game. This one. Absolutely, this one should be a cracker. Um, there'll be big hits galore um, and plenty of that Pacific passion and flair that we've seen develop over the last sort of three to five years for these two sides, um, particularly Tonga. Um, you know, with the two the two teams on the day, they'll be running out. They'll be absolutely stacked to the brim with um, talent and power and NRL and state of origin experience there. So, what a game, eh? Tonga, on the one hand, probably showing their best of the group stages for last, really ramping it up there against the Cookies. Um, no coincidence with the return of Big Jace through the middle. Um, going three from three there. Um, Doing what we've said, making that ascent a little bit later on, possibly. Yeah. Saving saving themselves for later in the tournament, but yeah, they've you know coming into this game off some off some really good form. Up against the team who sort of also you know doing a similar thing, coming coming into their form a little bit later. Um, you probably look at the two squads on paper and I think you probably have to lean towards Tonga but it, it, it's it's a tricky one and I think Samoa will be really up for this game you know that we'll you want to excuse me you want to see pride and passion I think this is the game where you're going to see a bit of pride and passion yeah Samoa did not start the tournament to script as we've uh, been banging on about here the last few weeks but you know they've managed to turn that around with two big wins and yeah finally looking like the side that we predicted that they could be um, particularly up against the French <sighs> who knows if they can play well they can definitely beat Tonga here um, but you're right, I think it will be a tough one for them. I think I'm just going to have to go with Tonga to set up a semi-final against the Poms there. But if Samoa can do it, they'll set up their own little rematch, which will be good to see Samoa coming in ready for that one, I think. Um, but fuck, yeah. The more I think about it, the more I really don't know, eh? Um... Like you say, Tonga probably have more across the park overall. But then when I look at the spine, Samoa's spine is 
looking very, very tasty in these last couple of games. Um, and I think they've got a bit more big game experience there with the likes of Milford and Luai um, and CHT. Um, but, you know, Lola here on the Tongan side, he's got plenty of experience. Um, maybe Katoa's inexperience is a blessing in disguise in this one. Um, doesn't have the demons of any big, of any big game losses big game like Milton exactly. um, in that grand final there. Um, but yeah, what a game this will be. Make sure to tune in. For this one, if you if you do tune into one of the quarterfinals, I think this, this is, is the, the game one that want to be missing. is truly, truly in the balance for the punters. And yeah, there'll be plenty of power and, and flair and oh, what a game, what a game. Yeah, really, really looking forward to this game. I think with, with the little bit of the boost that they've had from that big win, I think I'm probably going to lean towards... Tonga in this one, I think it's it should be a should be a Tonga in England uh, semi final, but I think this game could be a little bit closer than expected. Um, I think if you're backing Tonga to go out there and um, put on a huge win, you may be a little bit surprised. But my mum always says that's how you play on the day, so um, it's yeah, it's going to be a going to be a match up that's going to be awesome. Like we've said, make sure you don't miss it going to be awesome it's going to get us get us ready for some some really tasty looking semi-finals and it's it's a shame that we couldn't have had this one a little bit later on in the proceedings but um i'm just glad that we've got to see it, see the match up at, at all that's um something i've been really looking forward to yes you definitely have um i think we all have um footy fans um particularly with the number of big names that have committed themselves to Samoa in this World Cup. Um, yeah, bring it on. Um, but that probably wraps us up on that note for the footy as we move on to the other kind of footy, the round ball, the football, the beautiful game, whatever you call it. Arsenal up against PSV. A loss. Not the best performance. A there. loss. We haven't had one of those for a, for a wee while. It's 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 new. It's different. It's it's one of those feelings that we have we haven't had for a wee while, and one of those feelings we used to feel quite quite often as as Arsenal fans. So you know we will, we will take it. It's we take it on the chin. Um, bit of a shock of a performance, really. I didn't really get didn't get to see the game live. I watched the highlights. Uh, I watched that after, with you actually after you'd already seen the game and um, yeah, bit of a shock performance really surprised it wasn't 4-5-0 or five nil to PSV to be honest yeah they put the ball in the back of the net five times um, yeah fuck I need to be offside there um, unlucky unlucky lads you're never going to be perfect every game and it's obviously a very tough place to go and pick up a result but at the end of the day I thought there was a couple of maybe not so regular players that got their chance to impress um, Arteta but they probably didn't quite deliver what they're capable of and you know what him and the Arsenal fan base there are expecting of them um, two that come to mind there, Eddie and Sambi, and then you've got a number of the other lads there that were more regular starters this year that we've seen really good performances out of, um, and they were all pretty flat on the day, to be fair, I can't really say any one of our players had a particularly good game, um, in all honesty. I don't know what your assessment of it was, but yeah, it was pretty flat from pretty much everyone. Yeah, really from, from what I saw it, like I said, you know, a bit of a shock. It, it didn't really seem like we got got the wheels going properly in this game here. Um, you know, it's a, it is, it's, a, it's a tricky place to go to. Um, you know, they've, we've seen how they've played throughout. 
so far um, you know in, in the Eredivisie and also in, in Europe but um, yeah not not the best performance but hopefully something that we get out of our system now in the in the group stages before we get into the, the knockout rounds get get the loss out the way now and then we, we hopefully can, can go through and get a few more a few more wins on the board yeah look at the end of the day it's only the second loss of the season first loss in the Europa League um, it's our first loss in the group stages there for a while now I believe um, and I thought like I said, Eddie missed a, a good chance there to make it 2-1 and maybe push in the last 10 or 12 minutes, but I think it maybe shows that his confidence might just be a little bit shot with the arrival of Jesus and the reduction in minutes that he's seen um, as a result of it compared to the back end of last year where he was playing a lot of games and scoring relatively a lot of goals um, even in these other tournaments um, the Europa League and the Carabao Cup there um, but I thought PSV like you said they were pretty pretty exceptional um, we saw this time around what the hype was um, all about around players like Gakpo and De Jong, I thought he changed the game completely when he came on, but the star of the show is Xavi Simons. 19 years of age and was giving our defence a very tough time of things. Um, I don't know, did you enjoy that little ruled out goal he scored? It was pretty tasty. Really um, looking like a player. Quick, quick, a bit lucky, but you know, quick feet in the box and quick reactions and pinged one home there so unlucky to have one ruled out there so definitely a star for the future I think um, we've been hearing a, a lot about him as a youth player through the Barcelona and then PSG ranks there and I think PSG have a buyback clause for the end of this season there so it'd be interesting to see if he ends up back at PSG or yeah, where he ends up, because I think there, there'll be some big clubs come sniffing for him soon. Um, he was an exceptional player, and he's scored a lot of goals so far this year. Really looking like the player that people have been were talking about early on. He was um, sort of touted at a really young age, um, and really look, really talked about as possibly one of these next big things. And he's he has he's since he's moved to PSV, he's really looked like he's coming into his own but possibly that little bit older now as well 19 now you know still only so young um, and you're right a little bit of a buyback clause there uh, for PSG so you know if they can um, you know if they, I guess if they see enough of them this year at PSG I, I think it would be hard not to not to think that they'd possibly be looking at that buyback clause for next year um, but yeah some some really good performances I thought from, from PSG Gakpo like you said after going so quiet that week before, looked looked really good. Um, were they up against a tired Arsenal team? Possibly, you know. It's we've had a lot of games. Yeah. But we don't want to be making any excuses. Like I said, we take the we take the L on the chin. Yeah. Look, I thought we possibly did run out of energy a little bit there, um, as we maybe sort of touched on a little bit um, and predicted might be the case. Um, in early episodes there um, yeah perhaps a few of these lads like Saka and Martinelli and Xhaka um, and some of those you know some of those boys that are having to get up twice a week for a game and put in a really good performance maybe they can have a bit of a rest put their feet up and watch some of the other boys um, get out there and, and have a go um, but bouncing back from the loss in emphatic fashion Big up against point. Nottingham Forest back to the top of the table 5-0 Big win, a 5-0 win for our 5th released episode it's fitting um, another game it's, it's, it's a struggle 
with, with the timing of the games it's a struggle to watch some of these games live and unfortunately I've got a couple of really keen footballers in my class who came in and um, happily told me that Arsenal had, had a win overnight um, and it's it's a lot easier to, to remind a, an adult that you don't want to be seeing the score um, but they looked so happy when they when they told me and it was one of those things you know maybe if it had been a loss the, the reaction may have been a bit different but you know having seen these highlights um, you know really nice to see us putting in a big win getting a few few goals under our belt in a game where it could, could have been a little bit scary for some of those lads you know after their um, the opposition's result uh, in that last game up against Liverpool yeah look we did say last week that Nottingham Forest were certainly capable of coming to the Emirates and spoiling the party but after a decent start to the game and awesome to see Martinelli with that header I thought it was an awesome header there um, to take the lead early on um, but then didn't really kick on with it Forrest maybe doing a really good job there in the first half to sit behind and park the bus as they say in football terms but you know on the other hand I thought Arsenal as well were lucky to get away with a mistake or two there in the first half um, another thing from the first half scary to see Saka go off mm, not it's, nice at all particularly if you are an English fan um, they'll be hoping he's coming into the World, World Cup Nice and fresh and free of any niggles there because um, he'll be an important player for them and we saw it at the Euros and he won England's Player of the Year last year so yeah, hopefully he can bounce back and make a quick recovery for both Arsenal and English sake. Yeah, exactly. A little bit of a scary thing to see there. I think Arteta had said something after the game that it's... Um He's hopefully not a World Cup doubt. I don't think we'll be seeing him pull on an Arsenal shirt before the World Cup. I think Arteta will be... I think Arteta will sympathise with Southgate yeah. there and Saka and maybe just give him the rest in the next two games. Um, hopefully nothing that does require any longer than that. You know, we'll be crossing our fingers that he can, um, you know, come back strong in, uh, after the World Cup in December and... Hopefully, for English fans' sakes, off the, off the back of a couple of really good wins. But, um, yeah, a bit of a, bit of a scary, scary thing to see. Nice little touching tribute to Pablo Mari there after the first goal, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, shout out Pablo Mari. I'm hoping, I'm sure he, sure he saw that and, yeah, hopefully he enjoyed it. But I thought the second half was much more like it from the lads. Um brilliant performance there and awesome to see us rack up the goals to make it 5-0 in the end and of course that extra cherry on the icing of the cake there was the clean sheet I'm sure the defenders and Ramsdale along with Arteta and you know everyone really will be stoked with that first home clean sheet of the season um, awesome stuff Yep, really cool. I, I I thought there was some you know some really awesome finishing in this game and some some real well deserved shout outs. I thought Reese Nelson looked really really good when he came on, made a real big difference when he came off the bench. Got himself a couple of couple of goals and an assist. I thought Party absolute screamer and looked like he had a pretty good game. And then like you said, yeah, just then that back five the defenders and, the, and Rams, Ram is there at the back another clean sheet which is awesome and um, I actually wasn't aware that that was our, our first uh, home clean sheet of the season so that's it gets a little bit surprising possibly you know the way we've been playing but we've had a couple of, a couple of clean sheets and it's um, it's always nice to see um, so yeah well, well done and I think Ben White I don't know it might have only been about 1-0 but had himself a really good block yeah. Um, yeah. So there's blocking Jesse Lingard's shot there. Well, and like I said, it's a team that you know coming off a, a one 0 win against Liverpool, and it's no no mean feat that one there. So um, I think you know it's, it's a nice a nice result to see, and it keeps us up at the top of the table, which we we always like. Exactly, top of the table. Um, yeah, 
shout out to Reese Nelson as he said bagging a double on his return after a bit of a an Arsenal hiatus there awesome to see um, there was plenty of hype around him five or six years ago and then we saw the likes of Saka and Martinelli and Smith Rowe and Aubameyang and all of these lads come along and he sort of struggled for a bit of game time there and all of those other lads from the academy sort of leapfrogging him in the pecking order but awesome to see that you know when when we do need to call upon him um, there's still a top top quality player in there and you just know how much he loves Arsenal as soon as he scores that first goal he kisses the badge um, and yeah he'll have a big role if Saka or Martinelli or you know, we've already seen Smith Rowe has been out injured for a lot of this season um, we might just see Reese flourish into the player that we once thought he could be for Arsenal um, rather than having to get that move away to to flourish and, and become the player that we thought he could. Um, yeah, Odegaard with the fifth there, great finish, but the goal of the game has got to be that Thomas Party one to strike. That's probably goal of the game week. I don't know. If, uh, I haven't really seen any other goals, but holy fuck, what a goal that was! Um, yeah. Starts outside and so whips nice. it in. Oh, super, super tasty and. I guess the only negative of the day was maybe if you want to be really critical, Jesus with the finishing there, he could have probably nabbed himself a couple of extra goals and we'll need him to be sharp in front of goal if we are to keep up this winning run and continue to stay top of the table and comp compete on all four fronts, but apart from that, he was superb. I mean getting a couple of assists and running his ass off as usual so not really a major complaint there um, I'm sure once he gets that the way it goes for strikers once you get one or two they just start flowing it just becomes easy again um, once he gets that confidence back we saw it in pre-season he was banging in hat trick two hat trick you know it was just ridiculous but End of the day, it's three goal, uh, three goals, three points, five goals, job done, back to the top of the table. It's a good shit, lads. Keep it going to the World Cup, and then we can come back after that and reassess and give the second half of the season a, a really good crack. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully, come back in some good form with one of one or two of our players possibly coming away with some. Some silverware, a winner's medal, uh, getting themselves their hands on the trophy. Um, it would be really nice to see. Um, and yeah, hopefully we can look to kick along with the league, um, get some, get in some good form after after the break. And um, oh, it would be lovely to push on and get a title. But plenty more games to go before that. And one of those games we do uh, need to have a little look at is um, our next. European game, our last group game, uh, up against Zurich. Yeah, look, nice and simple for Arsenal here. Um, a win takes us to the top. You know, no questions asked, and even if we don't win, um, we can still top the group if Bodo Glimp can also stop PSV from winning in Norway. Um, we mentioned their previous home record. Um, couple of episodes ago, 14 from 14 before Arsenal went there and so that leaves them at 14 from 15 um, with Arsenal yeah, the only team managing to go and get a win there um, which we probably didn't deserve really on the night really, yeah, probably not but back to Zurich I suppose um, won't be easy if we don't pick a strong lineup as everyone's sort of expecting in this one um, but look, surely we can pick up the dub and move through and avoid that hectic round of 32 clash 
um, and one of those teams that's due to drop down from the Champions League there, Barcelona or Juve or one of those teams there, um, avoid that. Yeah, that's. I guess that's the big thing here, is ensuring ensuring top spot. We don't really want to be playing an extra an extra round of knockout for you there if we can. You know, there is some of those teams you just said, some big names dropping down from the Champions League this time around. Some teams that have found themselves finishing in third place. Um, you, you said it right at the start there. Hopefully, nice and simple. It's what I'd be hoping for a nice simple win. I'd be really stoked to see. A clean sheet again would be nice, and maybe a couple of appearances for some of those those players on the out. You know, does Reese get a, a start? Surely, you know, or does he maybe get rested? Maybe if Saka's going to be out, if if he's looking at being maybe involved in the starting team. Um, but you know, it's one of those games we we really like to avoid any slip ups in this one. Um, wouldn't be too nice if we were to were to lose. This one go through, go through having lost the last two and possibly find ourselves in, in a tricky spot. Yeah, look, surely we can see a good performance and a good win here, and hopefully, if Eddie's starting up top, he can get himself a goal or two to turn his confidence around. Or same for Jesus, like we just mentioned, he just needs that that one or two to turn his confidence around, and I'm sure if we can play anything like our best we'll we'll do the job here and yeah we'll wait and see what lineup Arteta goes for um, have you found yourself any value with the bookies on this one? Uh, I, I thought I might have not really value but just like I said earlier I'm just trying to bank a bit of money in the kit and now that I've just what we've just said and, um, maybe that's no, got me thinking does Reese get himself involved in that stunning lineup does he maybe get a rest for this game here um in preparation for Chelsea. But Chelsea nice. away, I'm thinking we might be looking more at keeping possession of the ball rather than someone like, I think Reese might have got subbed on before Vieira today because he's better at taking on a player one on one. Back four. Um, whereas Vieira, no offence to Reese, but I think Vieira sort of suits that nice movement of the ball and I think that's what we'll need against Chelsea rather than the one-on-one -on -one sort of create a bit of space for yourself that Reese does because um, I do think we might be up against it against Chelsea but anyway I'm going for I'm Reece, hoping though, that that he, means yeah. Reese starts for I'm, you in this game I'm going for Reese. if you didn't get that punters I'm going for Reese. get himself a goal two dollars for you yep yep very nice two dollars forty for the man who's um got the hot boot at the moment as they say um, myself I've taken the goal scorers out of it I've tried to look for a little bit more value I've gone Arsenal to win this one 3-0 another good win another clean sheet 7 bucks nothing too flash but look we got to start to keep trying to land things and then we can pump up the value and start to get a bit more adventurous once we get the betting gods on side I think no I like it it's like you said we've, we've got to just try and try and keep it simple to start get a little bit of money going and then yeah we can maybe get those get those punting gods on our side and, and, and look to push on but uh, a last group game there to get ourselves into before we like we said before look towards a game it's a big game. It's Arsenal versus Chelsea. We're away at the bridge, and it's it's probably Chelsea. Are probably probably the team that I dislike the most. So many players terrorised us over the years. I think I, I always look back towards Drogba when he used to wrap up against us. Um, and it is, it's a, it's a big game. Um, we're coming off a big win. They're coming off a big loss. We're both coming off different extremes, um, but a really, really good game. A good game for good game is a neutral. I can imagine. Yeah, it's always a tough game. This one, particularly for the Ars. Chelsea have probably had a easier time of it over the years, particularly 
through that Mourinho, Mourinho versus Wenger era. It's always tough to, like you say, go to their place, the bridge, and try and pick up three points, but I don't think there's been a better platform for us to go and do it than this season, really. Um, Chelsea having a bit of up and an up and down season really so far and they'll be low in confidence after you sit uh, like you said after getting dicked 4-1 by Brighton on the weekend um, but look it's Chelsea they've always got the quality uh, with the players that they have in their squad to bounce back and beat anyone on their day so we'll have to turn up and play some of our better football in this one um, if we're going to get the job done because anything less than sort of a 9, 8, 9, 10 out of 10 um, we'll be walking away copping another L I reckon yeah definitely it's one of those games I think regardless of the form or regardless of whether you've, whether you've come off a loss or a win um, Arsenal versus Chelsea it's always a huge match up um, and like you said we're going to have to be at, at a 9 or a 10 to, to come away with that a result here, but um, yeah, maybe is there is there a little bit of a drop in confidence after their last result, or are they going to be out to try and um, you know get a little bit of a, a swing in momentum after after the loss? Um, Stanford Bridge, you know, do the, does the home advantage come into play? We, we're really going to have to be on top of our game here, um, but it's a it's a game I'm I'm really looking forward to, and I'm got to say. A little bit more confident than I usually would be traveling to the brunch. Yeah, look, this oh not this time last year, but last season we went to the bridge and picked up the points thanks to an Eddie double, I believe. I um, think so, yeah. So fingers crossed, we can continue to build on our superb start to the season so far, and yeah, this is our second to last game before the the break in the Premier League. That is. Um, so yeah, let's go there and get the job done and come back in a really strong position. What do you reckon? Yeah, it's it's a game I'm yeah really really looking forward to. I'm really hoping we can come away with away with a win. You know, like you said, we we managed to do it last year thanks to thanks to that Eddie double and um you know it's. It's a, an interesting season. It's a different season, and with the the break in play with the World Cup, it's it's one where we're going to have to sort of be on, on form for different stages of the year, and hopefully we can end in this little first stage well before the World Cup, and then yeah, if we can if we can be in first coming in after that break, it would be it'd be really nice to see. So, um, really hoping for a win here in this one. It's it's pretty close. I think Chelsea were, were just the favourites when I had a look at this one. Yeah, um, Chelsea coming in as the favourites. Slim margin, I think it's just ten, five or ten cents, but look, come on the lads, I'm going to have to go for an Arsenal win. If you're offering me that, us as the underdogs, and I'm going to couple that into a Martinelli goal. Um, there's no goal scorer markets, I believe, as of yet. Um, wasn't when I checked earlier, but I reckon you couple those two together, you're probably looking around about five bucks, maybe six bucks if you've got yourself a boost and you want to use it. I don't know. Um, I'm feeling pretty confident of it. Like you said, it's a good time. We're coming off a good win. They're coming off a big loss. Let's go, the lads. I like it. I like it. I've yeah. When I looked. Chelsea were there at about two dollars sixty, and I think we were two dollars sixty-five. I thought it's not often you're going to get Arsenal there this season, possibly as um, the outside team. So I had to go for them. I've I've, I've backed the Arsenal and two dollars sixty-five again. It's a nice cruisy one, and um, if we can get the win, I'll be I'll be pretty happy with that to to finish off the the weekend of footy for us. Absolutely, let's go the Arse. Come on. Go to the bridge, pick up the three points. What a way to round out the weekend. Um, another switch up into the cricket. How good has it been? The Black Caps 
as a Black Cats fan, I must say, it's been bloody awesome watching this World Cup. Um, not the best to see the game versus Afghanistan rained off the other day, but it was good to see the boys back out there on Saturday night and picking up another dominating victory in the end, winning by about 60 odd runs. After looking in a bit of trouble early on at 15 for 3. Yeah, freaky game. Only on about 50 or 60 after the first 10 overs there, but... Yeah, watching this one live, I thought it was pretty hectic. Like, no real real weird start to the game. A couple of early wickets. Um, and then, you know, you, you were, I was kind of hoping that maybe Conway was going to be able to go on and get himself another big score like the previous game, but there was no luck. And... Yeah, bit of a bit of a weird start, and then you had Glenn Phillips coming out, the hero on the day, and managing to put on put on a huge shift with the bat, which was awesome to see, um, at a at a time when it was needed too, which was good. Yeah, look, we saw a couple of weeks ago John Cena himself shouting out Glenn Phillips, um, the absolute legend that is Glenn Phillips, tuning up in big style to save us from that pretty rough looking scorecard Um, other than that perhaps the John John Cena shout out was a bit of an omen of things to come Um, did it give him a bit of luck he was dropped a couple of times did it give him a bit of luck possibly exactly he was dropped on was it about 30 Um, that one was a a dead set sitter I have to say, Um, and then another one, maybe was it 60 or 70 he was on? Um, Yeah, a little bit later on, after he'd had his half century. It wasn't the easiest of catches, but Michael Clark in the commentary said, as a captain, you want to be holding on to those ones. Um, Yeah, a couple of lifelines, but good on him, made the most of it, and Brought us to a semi-competitive, well, more than semi-competitive in the end, total of 160, 167, I think it was. Yeah, a so score you can be a little bit more confident with, and I guess probably the bowlers having seen what, um, seen what Sri Lankan bowlers were able to do, they probably would have been maybe pretty confident that they could get out there and get a few wickets early on as well, which they did. Exactly. We saw a mixture of some awesome bowling and some superb fielding. Um, I thought also, to be brutally honest, some pretty shocking batting from the Sri Lankans there. Um, But like you said, those opening bowlers, they did the business, had them five for three, and then I think it was like 25 for five, and then, look, at 25 for five, you're never really much hope, are you? succumbing to about a 60 odd run defeat in the end when we managed to bowl them out in the final over there shout out to like you said Bolt and Southey starting things off brilliantly as always um, Trent Bolt managing his best ever T20 international figures there 4 for 13 off 4 overs yeah that's really, really really good like, like be said. happy with that economy and a test well maybe not but in a one day let alone a T20 um, oh exactly it's awesome stuff it's you know like, like you said maybe a couple of things that led to the the bowling some some good bowling maybe some not the best batting and some some good fielding and um yeah three wickets down early on really really nice I think they were eight for four at one stage even I, th- I believe um which is it's, it's crazy to think of at one stage I thought that we were going to be finishing up in about 20 minutes um, but yeah they they managed to stretch the game out a little bit longer but yeah some some really good bowling in the end and yeah like you said a, a nice little personal best there for um, for Balti to um, to sign it off with which is always good to see and um, yeah good step I think we're still top of the table I believe exactly um, only negative points I guess were a little bit of a a top order collapse and the one drop catch there from Santner and a 
pretty hectic misfield from Sodi. Um, so yeah, awesome to see all the lads out there and looking in pretty good form, um, to be honest. So yeah, I guess like you said, top of the table. We look towards our final two games of the group stages. Um, up against England which is on tonight so look we'll have to avoid another top order collapse in that one and we can't be relying on the middle order men as much as we did against Sri Lanka um, but I think it's just one more win and then we're through to the semis so hopefully the lads can get the job done and then the Ireland game becomes pretty trivial for us I think England haven't looked the best so far but they're always a tough proposition um, and they'll be stinging and looking for a, a bounce back from you know losing to the, the Irish last game and their big blockbuster game against the Aussies was washed out so plenty of washouts so far fingers crossed we don't have too many more now you're right, it, does, it is tonight. I've just actually checked. It's obviously been playing while we've been recording. Yep. So no washouts. Do you want to know where we are at at the moment? Yep, go on. We, we'll, let the, we'll let the listeners know as well. Obviously, it'll be a little bit delayed for you there. But we're at the break at the moment. Uh, England chose to bat. They've gone out there first in their minutes. They're getting themselves 179 for six. So not a bad score there. Josh Butler, yep. 73 off 47. Uh, Alex Hale's also making 52, so a really nice. 81 for one, the first little partnership there, so we didn't get a wicket until um, yeah. the, into the, after the first 10 overs, and then sort of seemed to get a few more, but um, it's, you know, it's it's, an, it's not a bad score there for, for England, so we'll be hoping that um, the Black Caps can get a win, like you said, but, you know, it's, um, if we can put in a good win here, um, and then, you know, hopefully we can, you know, we've got Ireland, I believe, in the next game there. And if we can get ourselves into some really good form and come through into into the final stages there, having won all of our games, it would be pretty nice to see. Oh, yeah. That would definitely be the ideal scenario. If, yeah, I think everything that I just ran through while you were checking up the score there looks to have come true. England have bounced back and put in a good performance with the bat and we'll have to put in a good one ourselves to chase that down 180 there and yeah, hopefully Finn Allen can get us off to a flyer and Devin Conway as well can anchor us down and not have to rely on the middlemen there and yeah go through undefeated to the semi-finals but if not We've still got another chance up against the Irish, and yeah, it will probably be a nice one if we do have to win um, to secure that semi-final spot. As you'd like to think that on our day, um, we're probably a bit stronger on paper than the Irish. Um, I mean, we've probably seen be them beat England we'll probably be putting them away more often than not but yeah like you said they have just beaten the English themselves and you never know what can happen if they have someone out there get a quick fire 50 or you know a bowler can skittle us to 15 for 3 and we don't have that saver saving innings from the big man GP um, but come on lads like Matt said, let's go through undefeated and let's go one better this time and win the damn thing, eh? Uh, it would be awesome to see, you know, like you said, if we can go one better, get us out, get our hands on the trophy. But if we can we can pull off the win tonight and then if we can get a win against Ireland, go through and win all of our games, it'll be pretty nice to see. So, um, probably wraps us up, I guess, in terms of the cricket for now. Yeah. Um, Come now, on, the caps. We introduced a little, a little quick touch last week on a little bit of the NBA. Now we told you our teams were. You are a, a Knicks fan, my friend, and I'm a Wizard. And now last week we we hit you with our records, and I think we were both at three for one. Now 
We've got good news and we've got bad news. Now, we'll start with the good news. We haven't gone below three in terms of the wins. We haven't lost a win. The bad news is we haven't grown in terms of the wins. Now, you're sitting there three for three. Wizards, unfortunately, having a loss today against Philly. Three and four now. Um, not the the best news in terms of the basketball to bring you this week, unfortunately. If you're a Knicks fan or a Wizards fan. Yes, a bit of a rough week. Um, only adding to our L columns. But for the Knicks, you look at it maybe with the glass half full and say losses to the Cavs and the Bucks isn't too bad considering they've got pretty stacked teams and particularly when you consider the Bucks with the Greg Freak Giannis Antetokounmpo there um, look it's a pretty tough one to get the dub but we said it last week we'll be hoping to um, get in as a bit of a roughie for the for the playoffs this year Yep. The Knicks and the Wizards. Fingers crossed that both the teams can, can do the do the trick and the bounce back the next week season. and we'll have some better news to report. Hopefully not looking at three and six, three and seven this time next week, but we'll we'll be hoping for a couple of wins wins there for the Wizards and the Knicks along the way. A couple of couple of the bigger teams I believe sort of fallen below there at the bottom. I think the Lake is uh, struggling a little bit. I, I know at one stage when I checked the tackle they were R and four. So, um, you know, we'll be we'll be crossing our fingers there for the Wizards and the Knicks, and like you said, uh, hopefully bringing some better news next week. Yeah, for sure. Um, not too much else to say, really. Come on, the Knicks. Come on, the Wizards. Onto the darts. Yeah, we'll finish off as we do with a little bit of the darts. Now we had, I guess, congratulations as are due for Ross Smith. Now, what a what a weekend he had over at the European Championships. Getting his first TV title. Um, started it off, I guess, with a huge comeback win against Peter Wright there in the quarters, coming back from 8-3 down to win 7 on the trot and come, with, come away with a 10-8 win. Uh, and then the Battle of the Smiths in the final, Ross Smith up against Michael Smith. Um, and he He's got himself a win, his first his first TV title. Really, really good to see. It's, you can see how much it meant to him. Averaged 101 throughout, landed eight 180s and converted 50% of his shots at double, so it's pretty nice. Four ton plus checkouts along the way, so it's, um, yeah, we've seen Josh Rock do it last week. We've seen Ross Smith now give himself a, a first, so it's, it's awesome to see a few of these uh, different names getting themselves some titles and um, we've got a couple of players championships to look forward to this week over the next few days before we have um, the big Grand Slam of Darts which takes place in a couple of weeks um, and I'll, I'll keep practicing I'll keep trying to smash in a few more of those 180s of my own and in a few years time hopefully who knows people might be talking about me on a, on a little darts party who knows but we can dream we can hope and we can practice um, it probably wraps me up, I'd say, this week in terms of any nonsense that I've got to tell people. Yeah, that's probably all I've got um, left in my lungs, as they say. So, yeah, as we always say, if you've made it this far, thank you very much for, for listening, tuning in. Uh, remember to give us a like, a five star, and subscribe to the podcast if you've enjoyed it. Give us a follow on your social media and make sure to have a good week ahead. Enjoy enjoy the footy, enjoy the darts, enjoy the NBA, enjoy the cricket. There's plenty going on. Enjoy whatever else you get up to in your personal lives. And as I always say, if you're having a punt, do it responsibly. And yeah, we'll see you here next week, same time, same place. See you then. Ciao.